not a stranger. No, I am yours. With crippled anger and tears that still drop sore, a fragile frame aged with misery, and when our eyes meet, I know you see that I do not want to be afraid. I do not want to die inside just to breathe in. I'm tired of being so numb. Relief exists when I am cut. These scars wouldn't be so hidden if you would just look me in the eyes. I feel alone here and cold here, but I don't want to die. But the only anesthetic that makes me feel anything kills me inside. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to die inside just to breathe in. Relief exists only when I am cut, but I am not alone. This song brings tears to my eyes even to this day. It's called Cut by Plum, and it broke my heart with every word. I knew I had hit rock bottom. Something had to change. But before we get to the sad, sappy part, let's actually talk about my coming out. I was 17 and horribly miserable in high school, and I'm sure that sounds very redundant because we were all miserable in high school. <laughs> I was tormented by the jocks, being called things ranging from faggot to broke back cowboy. I was so miserable that I was about to call it quits and end my own life. But I saw the impact that my best friend's suicide had on her family, and I decided to stay alive. But not for myself, but to keep my mother and father from being destroyed. So I destroyed myself in other ways on the inside. I disconnected from the world, and I decided my senior year that I would write my Freedom's Challenge speech about the ability for gay marriage and how unfair it was that straight people could get married and I couldn't. Ever. After giving my speech in front of my entire high school and junior high, all 300 of us, and part of the small Baptist community that I grew up in, life got worse. But I decided to tell my mother in February of my senior year, and she laid on the floor of our kitchen, in the fetal position, and cried for hours. She went weeks without speaking more than a word or two to me, and when she did speak, she was hostile, sometimes very demeaning, saying I was ruining my life by making this decision. I was so confused because I thought I was born this way, and my mother was telling me that I chose to be gay. Last time I checked, no one would choose to make their life harder. I graduated finally, but not before meeting someone that would change my life forever, unbeknownst to me. But surprisingly, my dad was completely amazing through all this. I know, right? This shit never happens to anyone. <laughs> dad didn't say much for the first few days, but then he came into my room when I was in the isolation phase of fighting with my mother, sat on my bed and said, Scooter, I want to talk. He proceeded to talk to me about my life and where I was going, and at the very end, he told me he just wanted me to be happy, no matter who I was with, a man or a woman. And that was also the year that he walked into my life. He will remain nameless because that's all he deserves after what he did to me. But enough of what the actual coming out. Let's talk about what brought me to my, the floor of my apartment alone and crying. I met him in the June after I graduated high school and immediately fell in love. He seemed genuinely concerned with all my problems and my issues. Well, I was horribly wrong. He was the absolute worst thing that could ever happen. I'm not trying to make anyone feel sorry for me by telling you this. That isn't the point. I'm just trying to make my point that domestic violence and abuse happens in gay couples, not just in straight couples. He waged psychological warfare on me. He used anything he could to hold my relationship over my head. He would compare me to every single guy that would walk by us at our junior college. Tell me, why don't you look like that? Or why can't you just be him? I ignored this for a while, but then it got worse. I won't go into details because it's not about him. It's about me. So I reached out for help in two individuals. We contacted each other because all three of us were battered and broken by society, outcasts, thrown away like trash. And for the first time in our lives, we were accepted and somewhat normal. But our common bond was the darkest secret that we all shared, an unspoken rule that no one knew about any of us. We were all self-mutilators, black sheep in our family, in society, and felt only pain because we had numbed ourselves to everything else. The only way to feel anything was to cut ourselves. At that point, feeling anything was a welcome relief, even if it was just pain. We shared many laughs and tears in trying to recover from the tragedies that struck us down when we were younger. 
fighting through the ostracization that junior college provided because we weren't the norm. We were everything but that. But we realized that God, who had loved us so dearly, had betrayed us, left us, abandoned, and broken like old children's toys. Fast forward to a year later. I left my junior college with a 3.7 GPA and working in a restaurant in my hometown. I decided to make the move to Aggieland, one of the most conservative universities in the nation. And there I was, the little homo that could, thinking, <laughs> I'm gonna be out and loud and proud about my sexuality. Wrong again. I was out and loud and proud for maybe a hot minute. Then I decided I just wanted to be left alone. I met the greatest love of my life during my first semester. He was everything I wanted and more in a man. Smart, funny, damn fine, blah, 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 the list goes on. <laughs> we got engaged under the century tree, and by the way, I think the century tree is homophobic because that magical shit does not work. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I wasn't getting enough emotional support on the home front, and I decided to look somewhere else, and he left. Talk about rock bottom. The only real relationship I had ever had was gone in less than 30 minutes. So I turned, I turned to drugs for comfort. At first, I just smoked a shit ton of cigarettes. Then came the other stuff. I had a psychological dependence, a need to be high to forget that he was gone. I couldn't cut because I felt everything at that point in my life. He t I turned to uppers to help with the depression and became hooked on them. I couldn't function without them. They seemed to be the only thing keeping me held together by the fragile stitches of my being. This continued until the end of the next fall. Then I had my epiphany laying on the floor of my bathtub, razor blade in hand, listening to music. My epiphany was that my life was a complete and utter wreck. I threw all my pills and razor blade away, and I moved home for Christmas. I thought going home would be a great plan to go get sober. Wrong. I quit doing drugs and went through the emotional roller coaster of coming off dependency while deciding quitting smoking cigarettes would be a good idea in the process. <laughs> Needless to say, I was not a pleasant person at Christmas. <laughs> my mother would do things just to push my buttons, and I feel like if I ever relapse, it'll be because of that cold-hearted bitch. <laughs> she would deliberately do things to piss me off and make me moody. So I came back to Aggieland on New Year's Eve and got a text from the guy I was with saying that I wasn't good enough to be with him and that he wanted to travel, and being with me was like having an anchor weighed on his ankle. I felt my heart crash on the floor of my apartment. He abandoned me, just like my two friends had left, leaving a huge gaping wound in what was left of my heart. So, here I stand before you, 21 years old, a self-mutilator, a recovering drug addict, a full-time student, a full-time worker, and a full-time fragile being. Let this be a lesson to everyone. My life may seem like roses and unicorns and all that other stupid shit that I can't stand, but it's because I learned at a young age to hide what was in my heart. I would have never chosen to be gay, and I would change it if I could. Don't be like me. Don't be a victim of society, and don't be a victim of addiction. Do everything you possibly can to be the opposite of me. I'm the worst role model ever. I've done everything in my life wrong. I went from having everything, a great love, a stable relationship, a stable emotional state, and I crashed like the fucking stock market. <laughs> I lost everything, my love, my stable emotions, most of my friends. I would give up everything that I have left for a chance to do things differently or to even live a completely different life. But that's not in the cards for me. What's in the cards is finding help for myself. Look at my life. Don't be like me. You'll end up with so many built-up emotions that you eventually break. Learn from my mistakes because I never seem to do. I've done horrible things to my body, and it took a lot of thinking to finally decide to tell my story. But I felt like if I didn't, I would continue to destroy my body and wage psychological warfare upon myself. <laughs>